Hey there! So, in the last video, I said that we would start doing example problems using the uh, concepts of momentum that I discussed, and so here we go! Uh, before we jump into the first example problem, though, I'm just going to go ahead and give a list of kind of general steps to tackle these momentum problems. You may or may not need to use all of them and you know depending on how quickly you want to do the problem you know you might not need to do all of these uh explicitly right but anyways so one you pretty much should always have some idea in your head of what's your system and what's your environment right you need to define those um you should also label a coordinate system uh, is this a 1D problem, a 2D problem, a 3D problem? You know, especially if it's 2 or 3D, you should be labeling a coordinate system and going from there. Um, if necessary, to find the center of mass of whatever system that you're looking at. A lot of these momentum problems are related to center of mass. Um, and then once you've done these first three kind of steps, uh, you should figure out with your defined system, are there external forces on the system? If not, momentum is going to be conserved. And if there are external forces, then the net external force is equal to the uh, rate of change of momentum with respect to time of that system. Uh, and then you go ahead and you use these laws to figure out whatever relevant equations of motion that you're trying to get to. So, in our first example problem, we have a man who's riding on a skateboard, and the two are moving together with some initial speed, vi. Now, the man is going to jump off of the skateboard in a way so that he is still relative to the ground. So, in order to do that, he had to push off of the skateboard, which is going to speed the skateboard up uh, to the right. So... Uh, just to reiterate, the man jumps off the skateboard, so he is still relative to the ground. And part A, what is the skateboard's speed after this? We're going to use the conservation of linear momentum to analyze that. And then for part B, we're going to show that the problem can be analyzed with Newton's third law. All right, so let's go ahead and start with part A. And we're just going to redraw out our situation. And step one, we should always think about defining our system. We want to define it in a convenient way so that our momentum will be conserved. And so, in order to do that, we want to define our system as both the man and the skateboard. This way, momentum will be conserved in the x direction because there's no external forces that are propelling or resisting the man skateboard system. Next, we're going to define our coordinate system of interest, which is the x direction. Yes, there could be some situation with the uh, where the y direction would be involved, such as the vertical component of the man jumping off of the skateboard. However, this is going to have no bearing on the uh, increase of the skateboard speed in the x direction. So we don't even need to worry about that. So. Because of this, we're going to be concerned about a one-dimensional momentum, just the momentum in the x direction. What this is going to do, this is going to take my generalized momentum vector of my system and turn it into a momentum in just the x direction. I think that writing the word out system every time or abbreviating system every time is a little bit redundant. So I'm going to call this quantity just PX. Okay? So that's referring to the scalar one dimensional quantity of the uh, momentum of my man skateboard system. So let's be very clear about that. So. We have no x-directional net external forces on the man skateboard system. So because of that, linear momentum is going to be conserved. So we can state that fact in one of two ways. This second way, 
that our initial momentum equals our final momentum is going to be the most valuable. So what is our initial momentum? Well, initially, initially we have uh, the man and the skateboard moving together with VI. So that would be the total mass of my system times its uh, velocity VI. There we go. And at the end, the man has zero velocity relative to the ground. So this would be zero. And then the skateboard is going to be moving to the right with some speed V final. So its momentum is M V final. From here, all we have to do is isolate V final by dividing both sides by little m. And we could rewrite this in various ways. I went ahead and just wrote two of them out. So any answer that looks like this would be the uh, correct one. All right, next we're going to show that the problem can be analyzed with Newton's third law. So the first step here would be to define our systems slightly differently, right? Because in this top part, we define our system as both the man and the skateboard. And by doing this, right, when the man jumps off of the skateboard, he's imparting, uh, so this is the force on the guy, right? He's getting some force in his feet, FJ, right? F from the jump. By doing this, he's putting that equal and opposite force into the board as well. Fj is also going into the board. But when we defined our system as both the guy and the skateboard, these were internal forces that we didn't have to worry about. So when we're using Newton's third law, we define our system as either the skateboard or the man so that uh, those FJ forces become net external forces. Um, okay. So this is the skateboard system at the moment of the jump. So we have an external force, uh, MG acting on our skateboard. We have FJ. This is the force that the man in uh, imparts into the board as he jumps off. Remember, he jumps off some way like this, and so he puts an equal and opposite reaction force into the board. We can break Fj up into uh, x components and y components, just like so. And then the normal force from the ground is going to cancel out the uh, force of gravity and the y component of the jump force. And so remember, it's perfectly valid. Uh, this is just by definition of uh, our net external force. We can add up all of the component external forces together. So it's perfectly fine to go through and cancel uh, these vertical forces out and just leave ourselves with this horizontal FJX, which is accelerating the board to the right. Okay? For the guy himself, the net external force is acting on him. He, of course, has gravity uh, pulling him down. And then he's also propelling himself off of the board uh, with some FJ, which breaks into FJY and FJX. We're only really interested in FJX for the context of this problem. So, step one. We're going to want to create an equation of motion for the board, so we're just going to use uh, Newton's second law. So Fjx equals ma bx, where this bx uh, this is referring to the uh, the board's acceleration in the x direction. Um, so there we go. So we can rewrite our acceleration by definition as dv bx over uh, with respect to time. Uh, and we move M to the other side of our equation. This is a very easy, nice, simple, separable differential equation. So we move DT to the other side. We integrate this from VI to V final on the left-hand side, 
and from TI to T final on the right hand side. And so this is going to simplify very easily to V final equals VI plus FJX over M times whatever the change in time is uh, that this acceleration takes place over. Um, if you get confused about these uh, little calculus steps, just remember, we're just solving for the acceleration on the board. And really, this is a very simple uh, kinematics equation where we just substitute in uh, AX there, or ABX, because it's the, uh, the board's acceleration. Um, but, yeah. Okay. The problem is, though, we don't know what the uh, what the change in time is, right? We don't know how long this FJX is acting on the board for. If we did know that piece of information, uh, we'd be able to immediately conclude what V final was of the board. So next, we go ahead and set up a an equation of motion for the man. We have negative fjx negative because it's acting in the left direction and this is going to equal capital m mass of the man times the acceleration of the man in the x direction that's what this mx subscript means it means acceleration of the man in the x direction okay and we go ahead and solve for our acceleration we can rewrite our acceleration as dv over dt Right, that's just the uh, definition of acceleration. And then we can separate out this uh, very easy differential equation and we integrate both sides. So the left hand side with the dvmx, we're going to integrate that from its initial velocity vi to its final velocity, which is zero, right? That was our condition at the end of the problem, that the guy, when he jumped off the skateboard, he had zero uh, velocity relative to the ground. And then on the right side, we're just going to integrate from some arbitrary uh, t initial to t final. Okay? And so that t final minus the t initial, that's just delta t. And so what we have on our left-hand side is negative vi, and our right-hand side, we have negative fjx over m times delta t. From here, we just isolate delta t, and we get mvi over fjx. So that was that's the time of this interaction where the guy is jumping off of the board. So this time now, we can go ahead and just take this guy right here and substitute it in right here for our board's delta t, right? This is telling us how long was this acceleration acting on the uh, acting on the board for. So because we have that time, we just substitute that in. Our fjx's will cancel out with each other, and we're left with the result vi plus capital M over little m times vi. Uh, we could also take the vi's uh, out if we wanted to write that out a little bit differently. But what we can see is that this is the exact same answer that we got from using the conservation of linear momentum. Now, which is easier? Definitely A. This process with A was a lot easier than B, right? We used some uh, calculus here. We could technically sidestep the calculus if you memorize these types of kinematics uh, equations, like that one there, and kind of like this one here. But either way, we did a lot more work uh, when we were using Newton's third law because we defined our systems as either the board or the man instead of the board and the man as a single system, right? And so that goes to show that if you're clever about the way that you define your systems, you can make problems a lot easier. So this problem really is not too challenging at all. However, I think it shows a lot of valuable skills uh, that you can learn as a physicist or 
or that you can uh, not learn, um, implement as a physicist to make your life easier. Um, and also, I think it's cool whenever you can tackle a problem in two different ways so that you can show that those ideas are consistent with each other. Uh, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed that little example problem. And thank you so, so much for watching.